So my plant journey started with that orchid right there in 2020. And then it grew to all of these outside. Inside, I have some in my room. Um, I have to like keep bringing them to work because I keep buying them. And then I'm like, darn it, I don't have room. <laughs> I love plants. So. My name is Lauren Butler. My life looked like a life of self-centered choices of um, running to anything that could ease the desire to feel wanted and loved by people, picking the next thing that could give me satisfaction in that moment, um, whether that was drugs, sex, alcohol, stealing, lying, um, I committed whatever crimes I wanted to. I didn't really know who I was. When I was 15 years old, I started using drugs. Getting high felt amazing. It was fun, and I felt like I didn't have to worry about putting on some kind of facade for people. I could just feel good. It quickly escalated. By 16 years old, I had overdosed on cocaine and was sent to rehab. I got out of rehab and um, tried to gain some control of my life again. I did pretty okay in high school, enough to get out, um, but that didn't last very long. And then I was in relationship with somebody who was experimenting with stuff and so so was I and I thought I was past the I don't know the problem that I had when I was 16 so I didn't even consider that it could be something I would carry on into my adulthood or being a problem me getting in trouble with the law and then um, going back to drugs and alcohol and then going back to jail and then getting out and going back to drugs and alcohol and then getting <laughs> going back to jail and that happened um between 18 and 27 when i went to prison about i don't know like maybe 25 times i went to prison in 2016 and um, I found God in, in jail. Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for everything you do. We come to your day to ask you to please bless this food. And, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 It's easy. Sword and sweet. I grew up in church. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure I was there as a baby. <laughs> you know, I was one of those ones growing up that I went twice on Sundays, on Wednesday nights. I accepted Christ at like age eight and baptized and all of that. But when I was in my 20s, I, I ran from Christ. Um, I, I got into a marriage early on that I was completely in love with the man, um, but I put, put my husband in the spot that God should have been. And so I put all this pressure that um, on him that he could never fulfill a role that I was putting him in, so that didn't last. But I found I found God again um, when I was 20, 28, and I had really run away, and I was searching in other ways. I was drinking in bars, doing all this crazy stuff, and I ended up coming home one night, asleep on the couch, left the TV on, and at two in the morning, I think it was Pat Robertson of 700 Club, it's like, there is nothing that you can't do that God can't forgive. He loves you. And I was just like, oh my gosh, he's talking to me. He's talking to me. And I started feeling all this like um, remorse for um, turning my back. And and because I, I really and truly had completely like, I don't want to say wrote God, God off, but it was like, yeah, he's not for me. I had been trying to get my husband into a recovery program since like, I don't know, 2018, 2019, and it just wasn't happening. And um, a friend of mine uh, named Catherine <laughs> in 2020 told me that there's a program called Regen at the Met and that I should check it out. 
So of course, I tell my husband about it. And at that time, we had reconciled and um, he was ready to, to continue on his recovery plan. So I wanted to go to make sure he went. I went to Regen just to make sure he would go and follow his recovery plan, which was part of my idea of how um, our marriage should go, right? So I, I went there just to control, control what was gonna happen. The first time I received the, the struggles list, man, I was blown away. It was almost like every third one has over 100. Every third one I could like circle, circle, circle. I was like, oh my gosh. And that's when it really kind of opened up that the Lord was confirming to me, this is for you, you know? Like, don't worry about your husband, this is for you. And I was like, all right, I'm in. So my son, um, first of all, he was my only child. He was a uh, senior in college and uh, he was out drinking with his friends and an accident happened and um, he lost his life almost immediately to a, a, a gunshot accident. When I walked into Region, it was um, a year later and, you know, trying to cope with so many things, I was trying to control everything. You can, you know, run to whatever self-soothes self you and for some reason, I just knew he was my lifeline or I wasn't gonna make it. My name is Samantha and I have a new life in Christ. Well, I'm a full-time mom, <laughs> all the time mom. So life for Samantha as a child was full of trauma. I would spend a lot of time raising myself, and I uh, reached out to anything that made me feel better. It made me feel anything but what I was feeling. Uh, things like, you know, drugs and alcohol. They were my go-to from a very early age. I started using drugs and alcohol consistently at 11 years old. I did not know God existed when I was young. Um, my first real experience in a, in a church um, and ended up being a really bad experience. And so I, for a long time, I thought if there was a God that he wasn't for me, because why would he let things happen the way that he did in my life, you know, as a child and then into my teen years when I was reaching out for help, I didn't get the help that I probably really needed. The way I dealt with that was I started drinking and using more drugs. I was, got really heavy into it after that. It's all I had for comfort. Uh, my drug use and drinking continued on into my adult years. I started going to bars when I was 18 and um, it got really bad. You know, there's just every day, every single day, it was a very vicious cycle. And then in my mid 20s, I got pregnant with my son. I got sober through my pregnancy and then continued on after I had him. And I got pregnant with my daughter a few months, maybe 17 months, I think, after I had Drake. And I got sober through that pregnancy. And then after that, things got really bad after having my second child. I was with somebody who was an addict himself, so. I was alone a lot with the kids, raising them. As my drinking and drugging progressed, I felt more alone and struggled more and more to be a good mom. I was became unemployable. I became homeless <laughs> eventually. And I became, you know, my children went to my sister. I became homeless living on the streets. And I was, in, I never felt more alone in my life. I was completely hopeless. I didn't have a desire to continue living. I felt like the world, my children, my family would be better off without me. And I really wanted to disappear. I was in Liberty County Jail waiting to pull chain to go to prison. These Different ministries used to come in and do prison ministry for us. And I was awakened one morning by 
this very beautiful, loud singing. And I snuck out so that I um, wasn't seen because I didn't want to be asked to participate. And I, um, I looked over and saw that it was a woman in, a, she was a quadriplegic. She was the one singing. And it was the most beautiful thing I'd ever heard. There was no other music. There wasn't a boom box or anything. It was just her singing. And um, I guess I caught her attention. She could see me. Um, and she invited me down. So I went downstairs and um, we were walking through some scripture. For some reason it comes to me that it's Romans, but I, I couldn't tell you for sure. And um, after they left, I continued reading. And I just know that there was a moment that I went from complete unbelief to sudden belief in an instant. I had no doubt anymore. I had a million questions still, but I had no doubt that it was real. I went upstairs and I prayed that God would forgive me and would help me and save me. And I didn't know how to pray it. I didn't, I wasn't sure, but I, I just, poured my heart there and um, continued to read the Bible and my mom bought me a study Bible when I was um, in prison and man I, I that's all I did except for what they made me do <laughs> I was baptized in Plain State Jail before I went to bigger prison <laughs> So when I got out, my best friend brought me to her church, Redeemer, and she would come and drive and pick me up. She lived in Cyprus and she'd go all the way to Meyerland to pick me up and take me all the way to Katy so that we could go to church every Sunday. Um, so that's how I first got involved after I got out. I still know a lot of people and I was one of those people who used to walk around and say like, oh, I hate people. But then I'm like, I really don't hate people. <laughs> I really love people now. I really do. And um, that's just, that is just not something I ever said before. I felt as though with my son gone, I had no legacy. And I felt as though um, it was a big deal. You know, it was a big deal thinking that you have no family to carry on, you know, your family traditions or not even that. But just, again, the bigger picture is teaching who Christ is and just, you know, building up more disciples through your family, right? That's usually your f closest group that you get to do that with. And I felt like I had no future. That's when the journey really began for me to seek Him in a way I've never sought Him before. It, it was almost like a, a do or die situation where, you know, I'd go to work and I had my Bible in one hand, my computer in another. And it, it was just like on my lunch break, I was in scripture because if I didn't, I really felt like I wasn't gonna make it. I was dealing with anxiety, depression, grief. Um, I was having suicidal thoughts. And I knew um, from all the teaching that I had as a child that if your thoughts aren't lined up with scripture, something's wrong. And that's the something's wrong that I was hearing when I was, you know, in, embarking in the journey of region because I knew something was wrong, um, but I couldn't put my finger on it. I think I know a lot about Leslie. <laughs> um, we, I met her at region in Groundwork. And when I heard her story about her son, I was, I, I don't have children, so I can't actually imagine what it would be like. But the thought of she had just lost her child, it hadn't been very long. And every time that she spoke about it in the heartbreak, she spoke so highly of God. It was never a question that God was with her and that he was good and that he loved her despite how hard it was to go through that. And then she was struggling in her marriage and still God is good. And it was just, I, I've never seen anything like it. I've never seen anything like it. So in, in our small groups in, in region in that process, I, I was grouped with um, leaders that 
I can be completely honest, open, you know, no shame, no guilt, no condemnation from, from the people in my group. And that is so freeing. Um, and I wish we all lived like that with everybody, right? But, you know, we become fearful, or I become fearful, of, of telling things because I'm afraid of people's reaction or whatever. But you don't have that in this group. People in your group are walking beside you, or walking beside me with it the whole way. And so you can lean on them at any given time. And there's accountability in there, and there's encouragement in there. But I, I, I love watching how they're all in different phases of life and they all have different struggles, but they all come to the table ready to talk about them fully and to work it out. Like they are ready to have a life changing experience. They are done with it and ready to see what God can do to fix, to help fix them, help heal them. Being homeless and on the streets and on drugs makes you into a person that you never thought you could be. Um, and I ended up being incarcerated while I was in Harris County. I met a lot of people there that were very, they were very close to God. So that kind of made me curious about God. Um, and. So I started reading the Bible. I had a King James Version, and that's a hard read. Uh, a lot of Christian literature. And then I just started to just want to know more. And so I, I felt, you know, hungry for His Word, and I was in it every single day. I made it through the entire King James Version while I was in county. Um, other ladies, they had is a, a life recovery Bible. Um, and I had read through it with them in there. The night before I left, another inmate handed me a, a life recovery Bible. It was brand new, still in the package. Um, I had talked about it so much, you know, it was the best gift anybody could have given me at that point in my life. Working the steps through my recovery Bible, I learned about myself that that I'm not a bad person. Um, I'm, I'm, I was a sick person, and I wasn't bad trying to get good. I was sick trying to get better, um, and that God really loved me, loves me. For the first time in my life, I took complete accountability for my actions and everything that led up to my situation at the time. And I think that was the first time ever that I didn't blame somebody else for what I was doing. Uh, I was the most free I had ever been in my entire life while I was incarcerated. I don't know if that makes any sense, but I was at peace with what had happened. Um, and my addiction, and I was no longer ashamed of the things that I did. I truly felt like I had been redeemed while I was sitting in prison. <laughs> um, when I got out and started coming to the Met, um, I got out and two, three weeks later, I believe, I got baptized at the Met, and I have been coming here ever since 2018 with my children. And then the Met rolled out regeneration and I was able to go into that program and um, I was really able to dig deeper after I had gotten about a year and a half of sobriety under me. Samantha Bumpers, um, she I met her through our second chance group at the Met. And um, I mean, just kind of watched her go through this struggle of, of desperately wanting to get her children back in her life, just trying to make the next right choice in everything she did, um, going to a job she didn't really like, but knew she just had to go to and doing well at it. 
Um, I was able to watch her, you know, live in integrity and um, faithfulness with her children and her sobriety. And I work for a nonprofit that houses the homeless disabled individuals called Harmony House. Um, so then last year, I was able to offer her a position at Harmony House. I have a group of women who are, they're like sisters. Uh, we talk about everything together, from relationships to children, to parenting, to finances, to, you know, just how our day was. And I don't have fear of talking to them, of being judged or being criticized. You know, they're, it's an uplifting experience. We can share with each other, you know, goals and encourage each other to move forward and everything that we do. And they've walked through so many trials already with us in the last two years. Um, and I just, it's like, it, this is my family now. The difference being a single mom on my own and a single mom now with a church family, it's like night and day. I, I don't feel the same fear the same hopelessness. I don't feel like I can't move forward in my life. I don't ever feel afraid that I'm gonna be alone if I ever have any kind of problems. I have a whole lot of numbers that I can call and they will be there, they will answer the phone, they will help me with anything that I need. My son is up there cheering me on. He, he's so, um, I know he's so proud that I ran to Jesus after he left. And that um, anyone whose life has changed um, because of Christ, because of the story that I can tell of what he's done for me is the legacy. And it can go on generation to generation. It doesn't have to be my blood. Today I'm full of light and my addiction days and um, growing up, I was just, I was a very sad, broken human being, um, and I barely existed. Today I actually live, and I live life in abundance. It makes my heart full to see that they have found freedom in so many different struggles that they came in with. Um, and it just makes me love God even more for it.